right, guys, very excited. This is our inaugural partnership segment with the Daily Poster and David Sirota. Um, he joins us now. So I explained this yesterday, but we're officially entering into a partnership. We're going to do this weekly recurring segment to post on Friday. Obviously, we're promoting it to our people. You're incredible uh, reporting that you can't find anywhere else. You're going to push the segment out to your people. So great little collaboration here that I'm very excited about. David, welcome. Good to see you, David. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Solidarity. Yeah, of course. 100%. Absolutely. That's what yeah. this is all about. So you have a great piece, you and Andrew Perez. Let's go ahead and throw this up on the screen. Look, we know the surface level negotiations with regard to the reconciliation package and the infrastructure bill, but what you have been getting at is what's really going on the scene, behind the scene, and what's really driving these various characters to do what they're doing. In particular, you focus here on Josh Gottheimer, you describe as the billionaire's Democratic bag man. He is the House's top recipient of private equity cash. David, lay out for us how that is impacting his approach to the reconciliation bill. So Gottheimer is one of eight or nine House Democrats who's trying to undermine the so-called two-track strategy, the strategy by which the only way to really pass the reconciliation bill is to keep it linked to that infrastructure bill. He's one of the eight House Democrats who's trying to de-link the two bills uh, and pass the infrastructure bill alone, which would, it, many believe, would ultimately kill the reconciliation bill. Now, as you said, as we reported, he is the top recipient of campaign cash in the U.S. House. Uh, from private equity, the private equity industry. The private equity industry, you will not be surprised to learn, uh, has lots of things that it objects to in the reconciliation bill, uh, particularly all of the potential tax uh, measures that could be in a final reconciliation bill. Even more specifically, uh, things like the carried interest tax loophole, which is the loophole that allows private equity moguls to classify their income as capital gains rather than income, and therefore pay a much lower tax rate on the on that income uh, than a typical American worker pays on their income. Uh, there's also provisions in there uh, raising taxes for uh, billionaires. Uh, obviously, the private equity industry has lots of very, very wealthy people in it. Uh, and of course, the private equity industry has an incentive to only pass the infrastructure bill because in the infrastructure bill are provisions that are designed to encourage and push state and local governments uh, to fund infrastructure projects through so-called public-private partnerships. Uh, an example, Blackstone is a private equity giant that is Gottheimer's number one, uh, their donors are his number one campaign con uh, contributors. Blackstone is heavily invested in the infrastructure world, uh, is heavily interested in those kinds of public-private partnerships. And finally, uh, Blackstone and other private equity firms are, are very uh, invested in the fossil fuel industry. Uh, they have an incentive, therefore, uh, to not want the reconciliation bill to pass, the reconciliation bill's programs designed to transition the country uh, or begin transitioning the country away from fossil fuel. Yeah, I mean, so David, I'll lay out you laid out very well about the private equity industry and more. But Gottheimer has been at the forefront of a lot of wealthy giveaways, including the salt tax. Like he has been right. the forefront at trying right. to bring back tax deductions for the wealthy. I mean, he seems to be almost all encompassed here. And my question is, can you describe his district itself? Like how out of step is he with his own constituents? How is he pairing these together and making it so he works on behalf of the wealthy people? Well, look, it's a wealthier district in New Jersey. Uh, it is a Biden district. We should mention that. Uh, it is a certainly a swing district, but Biden won that district. Uh, and and look, the things that he's pushing for, let's be clear, it's one thing to push for sort of upper middle class tax breaks, uh, sort of upper middle class uh, affluent uh, uh, giveaways uh, to and be from a district from there. I, I don't think that's good politics, but, you know, I guess you could you could argue some of that. But let's be clear, he's pushing for uh, giveaways that would mostly benefit like the crazy, super ultra rich, like <laughs> the Dr. Evil twisting the mustache uh, <laughs> kind of uh, kind of villainous uh, giveaways to, to the super rich, right? Like the carried interest tax loophole uh, is, a, a, a t is for a tiny handful of people. The salt tax breaks that you're talking about, uh, what the stat is something like 80% uh, of the benefits uh, go to the top 
uh, uh, 10 or 5 percent of income earners in the entire country. And I think it's 50 percent of the benefits go to the top 1 percent of of income earners in the country. So these are not broadly shared tax breaks, even among the kind of top 20 percent, top 30 percent. We're talking about a tiny handful of people. And what I what I think that actually is the tell for is that he and his and his colleagues who were with him on this, uh, they don't necessarily care about what's good for their district. They care about what's good for the tiny segment of the population that provides them with a disproportionately huge amount of the money that they use to buy their elections and their reelections. Right. And where they may well go and work after they finish with their public service, quote unquote. Um, And David, this isn't a one-off. Gottheimer has been uh, a handmaid into private equity for a while now, based on your reporting here. Yes, absolutely. I mean, he pushed for uh, an expansion of Fed programs to give private equity firms uh, more money during the pandemic. Uh, He is somebody who has used a congressional hearing recently uh, to defend uh, private equity uh, and its and and public pensions investing in private equity. There's been a lot of reporting on huge fees and and reporting on on private equity firms basically fleecing public retirement systems. He has been at the forefront of defending that industry. And look again, I go back to. To the idea that the reconciliation bill is a wildly popular uh, bill. Uh, there's a lot of Congress people who support the reconciliation bill going out there saying it's a wildly popular bill. But Gottheimer is a good example of the fact that for the folks who are trying to kill it, and let's be clear, he has said, I'm, no, I'm not really not trying to kill it. I'm just trying to get the infrastructure bill passed. But clearly his strategy would kill uh, or at least make it easier to kill the reconciliation bill. And what Gottheimer is kind of proving is, is that there are a lot of these members who are trying to kill the bill who don't really care if it's popular broadly in their district. They are answering to the small segment of donors who disproportionately bankroll their reelection campaigns. In other words, they're betting that just having a huge amount of campaign cash will allow them to buy election and reelection, regardless of whether they're voting down uh, a very popular uh, legislation. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the stunning part here, which is that the things that they're holding hostage David, are, you know, literal giveaways, not just to the rich, as you say. I mean, the salt the salt cap one, yes, it impacts people who are suburban, but the vast majority of it just goes to people with a net worth of over a million dollars. And it just seems right. that, that that is what they are holding the legislation hostage over, not anything principled, at least from what I can tell. That's right. It's they're holding the legislation hostage for the donor class. Uh, They are betting they have a political formula that bets that nothing at all matters. Nothing doesn't matter whether you're for or against a popular bill. The only thing that matters is having a giant war chest of campaign cash to simply flood the airwaves with ads and buy election and re-election. And I'll be honest, you know, as horrible as it is, it's not necessarily a, a, I guess, politically uh, uh, ineffective strategy. They've been able to do that for years and years and years. But what this is whole thing has shown is that the corruption is now completely out in the open if you just take a look at it. Now, not a lot of media organizations are willing to follow the money. Uh, like th- this should be the central thing that we're talking about, that every media outlet is talking about. These kinds of things, you know, the, the Democrats who vote down the drug bill, uh, their connections to big pharma, Godheimer and private equity. This should be the central di- uh, point of discussion in the reconciliation bill. But but it's it's really not, it's barely part of the conversation. It's part of the conversation here uh, and in independent media uh, because it's important. And that it's, it's frankly what is really actually in reality driving this legislative debate. Yeah, Absolutely. and it's so infrequent that they ever get confronted with this set of facts. It just gets to fly under the radar. But, you know, I'm really I'm waiting for the day we have that popular grassroots uprising in favor of maintaining the carried interest loophole. <laughs> I'm sure that's just around the corner. Yeah. David, thank you for the great reporting. Thanks, Very man. excited to have uh, our official partnership. Of course, we've yeah. relied on your reporting and your analysis for a long time now, but excited to make it official. Thank you, my friend. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Thanks to both of you. Absolutely. No problem. We'll have more for you guys this weekend. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you back here officially for a full show on Monday. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.